Before we try and define a complex ion, let's look at the process of how they're formed. And we need to start off with an ionic compound that contains a transition metal. Let's, for example, use copper 2 sulfate. And then I'm going to take my ionic compound and I'm going to dissolve it in water. And to do this, ionic compounds dissociate into the positive and negative ions, which can then float freely around in the water. And I can represent that in a simple diagram, something like this. Here you can see that the copper 2 plus ions are floating around independently now of the sulfate ions. And of course, if I've dissolved it in water, there's going to be lots and lots of water molecules floating around as well. Now we need to focus on what's happening to the transition metal ion, in this case the copper 2 plus ions. Because they have a positive charge, they're going to attract the negative side of polar water molecules, something like this. There's the copper ion in the middle. There's some water molecules, and notice how the partially negative side of the water molecule, or the oxygen side, is being attracted towards the positive transition metal ion in the middle. And there's a reason I've only drawn six water molecules, and that is simply because there's only enough space around my copper 2 plus ion for six water molecules to get close. Because that central transition metal ion has a strong positive charge, it pulls the oxygen atoms close enough that they can actually use one of their lone pairs of electrons to form a coordinate bond with an empty orbital on my transition metal ion. So to try and represent this process, let's draw an orbital box diagram for the copper 2 plus ion, which has its outer electrons in the 3D sublevel. Because those orbitals are occupied, the oxygen atoms can't use them to form a coordinate bond. So you'll notice in the diagram on the right, I've drawn some empty higher energy orbitals. Technically, these are hybrid orbitals from the 4s, 4p and 4d sublevels. And because they're empty, an oxygen atom can donate a lone pair of electrons to form a coordinate bond. Remember that a coordinate bond is simply a covalent bond formed when one atom donates both of the electrons for it. Species or molecules or ions that can do this are known as ligands. And there are some other examples we'll see shortly. Anything that can donate a pair of electrons can also be named a Lewis base, which you may or may not have heard of in your course so far. Once this process has happened, we've now formed a complex ion. So let's draw a simple diagram of what that might look like. In this diagram, you can now see that my six water molecules have all formed coordinate bonds with the copper ion in the middle. And now, because this is considered as a single structure, the two positive charge from the copper ion is now shared technically over that whole structure. So I've used square brackets and a charge to show that. So we can say that a complex ion is formed from a meta transition metal ion and one or more ligands. In this case, the complex ion contains six ligands, so we say it has a coordination number of six. And we represent the chemical formula of this complex ion like this. There are a number of other ligands we need to be aware of, which we could replace the water molecules with if they are added to the solution as well. Some common examples we might see in IB chemistry are the chloride ion, the hydroxide ion, ammonia molecules and carbon monoxide molecules. So if, for example, I were to replace my water molecules with some chloride ligands, we get a complex ion that might look something like this. You'll notice in this diagram we can only fit four chloride ligands around my copper ion, so the coordination number of this complex ion would be four. And taking into account the charge of the copper ion, which was 2 plus, and the four chloride ligands, which each had a negative charge, you can see that the overall charge on my complex ion in this case is 2 negative now. So the chemical formula for this complex ion would look something like this. And that's it for this video. For information on monodentate and polydentate ligands, or how complex ions cause colour in a solution, you want to check out other cohesive chemistry videos. Hopefully this was of some help.